going back to the Iceman's inheritance real quick for the cause. Matter of fuck it with my guy. She's dope as hell. You know what I'm saying? She's my dude. I'm always out here fucking with my guy. If I could bring you into my life for just a quick second, you know what I mean? I sit out here, you know what I mean? Exchange energy with the tree. Let shit, thoughts, release certain shit. You know what I'm saying? If you know something about something, I got my backbone right up against the tree. You know what I'm saying? Spine on spine, you dig? But uh, hell yeah, like the roots and shit is the brain. You know what I'm saying? Of the tree, of most plants, any plant, you know what I mean? It's the roots and whatnot that are that are actually the brains, you know what I'm saying? This is, I ain't gonna get into all of that, but there's a book, The Hidden Life of Trees, by like Peter Wolbin, Wol Wol Wolobin, some shit like it, Wolobin, some whatever, but it's Peter W O H L, whatever the fuck. But The Hidden Life of Trees, check that shit out. Um, but again, man, point is, I got the spine, so the base of my spine is as close to the earth as possible. So it's like, you know what I mean? Good discharge of negative energy and whatever else, you know what I'm saying? Wow, like the tree, I'm pulling in good energy from the top of my spine, from the top of the motherfucking trunk, you know what I'm saying? Up there where the leaves and shit are, it gathers energy and whatever else, you know what I'm saying? So, gathering information and shit. So anyways, that was just me bringing you into my little shit real quick, real quick. Let's talk about these books. This is dope. The Iceman's Inheritance. So, I skipped ahead. I also got Conrad Lorenz. My fault. Conrad Lorenz on aggression. <laughs> Show you why I said, man. Going to the bibliography is really fucking dope. And it gives you a more in-depth understanding of what the author is saying. More so, like a rule book of arguments. Why the author said what they said a lot of us again as far as arguing and shit we get caught up on what's being said you know what i mean versus why it was said you know most arguments again this is just how i was brought up in school so i always go back to it but sre statement reason evidence you know what i'm saying so you make a statement then you give reasons for your statement then you have evidence to back up your reasons you see what I mean? So statement, reason, evidence. It's basically like a three-step fucking process to any argument. So before you start arguing, you want to think about what you're going to say, the reasons why you, you know what I mean, you're going to make that statement, and then the evidence you have to back up your reasons. You see what I'm saying? Your evidence for that. So point being, you can start anywhere. Some people, like the, uh, the statement is the premise, you know what I mean? And you set up your conclusion. Some people set up with the conclusion and work towards the premise. What was that? just failed. Ah, uh -huh, my guy is jumping at me. Thank you. I appreciate that, bro. So, I uh, got plants. That's what's up. Um, got some seeds cracking. You feel me? So I put them up there on one of the branches and what out to hang out with my big nigga. You know what I mean? Y'all hang out with the big nigga as we start to grow the seeds that started to sprout out of the little shells or whatever. This is just how I start them and whatnot. Getting ready to get my three green thumb cracking and shit. So, anyways. Man, let's get back to this video, right? So, <laughs> I skipped way ahead to chapter 7. Love and expression. Because again, we talk about the Western philosophy. White man, white mentality, right? <clears throat> so, well, I don't want to say white man. It's the Caucasoid is what we call it. But in this book, he constantly refers to it as the white man and the Caucasoid. So again, this is not me personally. I personally talk about like the mentality, you know what I'm saying, and the philosophy. But there's even a section about that. But we're just going to talk about the love and expression because love and expression has its whole chapter. So again, let's get to it, right? Um, and my bad if I'm not like looking at the camera and I'm looking around and whatever. Because as you feel me, I mean, I'm outside. I'm not afraid of shit, but I'm just saying, man, I don't want no nigga to run up on me, snatch my shit and run, and y'all gonna see me take the fuck off and beat a nigga to death out here. But anyways, anyways, <laughs> we gonna get into all of that. <laughs> but I said, nigga, I've been dragging, so you feel me? I'm prepared for anything. I'm just out here having fucking fun. So, uh, let's get to it, right? 
<clears throat> we are told that love makes the world go round, or that what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Love, as undefinable as it is, has been enshrined as the goal of both personal satisfaction and harmony with the eternal. Love is so central to the Western culture that in spite of the fact that we cannot define it, no one doubts its existence or importance. The concept is so familiar to us, so intimately associated with our most important aspirations, that we may be excused for assuming that the concept of love is universal to all mankind. It may come as something of a shock, therefore, to discover that most of mankind is innocent of anything like the Western notion of love. Whatever, is, whatever it is that we mean by love is simply irrelevant to most of mankind. The Chinese do not even have a word corresponding to love. The ancient Egyptians' two favorite words and concepts were ankh, life, and jed, stability. There is a good deal of uncertainty about whether the ancient Egyptians even possessed something similar to our idea of love. But if they did, the notion did not enjoy the degree of importance it boasts in our culture. So all you niggas looking for love, back to, I got it right here, but we probably gonna have to get into, the science of love which is why I will go in, I, I'm going to show you this to drive the fucking point home real quick though. Which is why the first, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, <laughs> 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 hell of a number but the first 24 chapters as you can see from this book corrupt love is 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 24 of them shits there's more on the other page but I ain't getting into all that I'm trying to focus this shit so y'all can see it and you might want to go ahead and buy this book John Baines The Science of Love but Back to the point at hand, this is why in a book that says the science of love, you got to start out with what love is not. Because a lot of motherfuckers have been, dare I say, whitewashed, brainwashed, mind controlled, institutionalized into this whole notion of love that I, as I just read, that ain't shit to the rest of mankind. Well majority of everybody else hell I say but anyways I'm not gonna say it ain't shit but you get my point here man niggas that are so caught up on love period that's why the fuck you gotta write a book about it you see what I'm saying cause it's, it, it, it became so fucking warped in, in niggas minds but anyways let me keep reading <clears throat> perhaps it is time to analyze our notion of love and it is in quotes so that's why I'm doing that of love from a psychobiological perspective. See, a rule book of arguments. From a psychobiological perspective. Not from your nigga perspective. Not from your experience growing up and your family and the way you would just fuck all of that. A psychobiological perspective. Motherfuckers that know something about psychology and biology. So anyways, as a more or less uniquely Western invention Western invention, and we've already went through all this other big section of the book where I got all of this shit. We've already went through that to understand Western is Caucasoid, a.k.a. Caucasian. So, anyways, it's a Western invention. They invented love. As a more or less uniquely Western invention, love must somehow be connected with our evolutionary experience and with our peculiar motivational requirements. Which one of the first chapters in this book, The Science of Love, is corrupt love is using marriage as an anchor and a goal. Using marriage as an anchor and a goal. So this is why you kind of need multiple fucking books. You can read one book and understand another book. I might have to, I'll be reading this shit, stop reading this shit, to start back on this shit, go back through this shit and understand more deeply about this shit. Because I've read this book, it made this book interesting as shit, and we will get to this book here in a second, but it made this book very fucking interesting, and you can see how all of this kind of shit ties in, and when you know 
certain aspects of love that humans do and the way we show love and express it and whatnot again corrupt love is this corrupt love is that corrupt love is this corrupt love is that that's expression love and expression which aggression anyways and in this book on aggression which i have already did a video on uh, uh couple two videos i believe on this book alone and it does again talk about aggression so you can kind of go through that and see what the fuck i'm talking about but again which makes it so deep but just to tie it all in you know i'm just bringing you back in like i said i'm out here enjoying myself drinking and i wanted to share some shit with y'all so i got all these books man hope you appreciate it so again check me out uh da 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 because we got some shit to get through and i'm not trying to make this shit super long like i usually do you know what i'm saying but either way man enjoy yourself <clears throat> Right, with our peculiar motivational requirements, okay? As a more or less uniquely Western invention, love must somehow be connected with our evolutionary experience and with our peculiar motivational requirements. If we will accept tentatively the argument, again, rule arguments, the argument that territorial behavior in the dimension of time must cause ambivalence towards sex and reproduction, then the identity, the identity of love begins to take shape. If we further accept the argument that Western man suffers more sexual reproduction, reproductive aggression and frustration due to glacial adaptations, which again, we went through all of that, glacial adaptations, which is why he refers to Western man as the Caucasoid, and aka the white man, those who come from the Caucasus mountains however i don't get into all that right now we're just talking about love okay all right, all right. the glacial adaption so if we further accept the argument that western man suffers more sexual reproductive aggression and frustration due to glacial adaptions conflicting with sexual ones then it becomes clear why love is so important in the west now them niggas had glacial adaptations right and um again to take you a little deeper into this hey what's up birds i got the birds out it's a little birds nigga he's like 10 fucking feet from me just chilling anyways my bad i had a holler at him though what's happening bro anyways um <clears throat> the glacial adaptations so again I, I there's a difference between being mad and being sad you know what i mean understanding the, the what what these motherfuckers had to go through, so to speak, to even survive as as an animal or as a human, period. You see what I mean? If you can feel sad, if you can feel bad for a dog that's out there in the cold, bare bones, looking and scrapping with other dogs that just can barely find something to eat, then how can you not feel sad for a white man or a Caucasian man? Back in those days that had no choice, they evolved that way. Them animals, hominids, whatever, humans, whatever you want to call them, they had no choice but to survive. And that's how it happened. You see what I'm saying? The problem is now we're no longer in an ice age, but that mentality has taken over the fucking planet. And that's what I'm getting at with this shit. It's the mentality. You ain't got to be a Caucasoid, but those glacial adaptations that cause that mentality, which is why this shit is so fucking dope. Because again, the shit in its most basic form has evolved into, because uh, over time, habits become traditions. Well, habits become rituals. Rituals become traditions. Traditions becomes a part of the culture. What we do and how we do it. You see what I'm saying? So, the habits, the shit that you used to have to do for survival or whatever else, they get redirected. We're going we gonna to talk about it. But point being, the shit that had to happen back then that was necessary for life and survival, that's key, that was necessary for survival then, is not really necessary for survival now. So it gets redirected, repurposed, used in other ways and factors and whatever else. You see what I'm saying? Which is why another book that I got here, the ISIS papers, the keys to the colors, because one of the biggest chapters in here, again, is also the concept of race. But that's also why this comes in, in case we end up talking about it, then I'll have to say something about it. But anywho, anywho, I digress because I got more tentative shit to do. So, <laughs> but that was my point, though. 
the glacial adaptations conflicting with sexual ones. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's where they grew up, for example, it was, or where they evolved in those glacial, you know, during the ice age, whatever, in those glacial territories and shit. Um, it's so fucking cold. So one of the glacial adapt adaptations was them niggas retaining their hair. You see what I mean? So that's why white people are more hairy and get long hair that, that covers their neck. It's thin and whatever else, long enough to cover the neck, cover the veins and shit that go to the brain. That's why that shit is necessary. You got long, kinkily, curly fucking hair. It's gonna, it takes forever. Nigga, I've probably been growing my shit, and I'm, I ain't got, like, the best grade of hair, but my shit ain't, like, the worst either. But point is, this is probably a year or some old shit, and it's right here. Give a white dude, like, five or six fucking months, and that hair will be down their fucking neck to cover their neck. That's why it goes down to the shoulders and this and that, to cover the neck, to shield the neck, to keep the heat and whatnot on those veins. It's a glacial adaptation. This is the science behind this shit. When you, anyways, point being, I'm getting at the hair. So also the hair that's all over their body and whatever else. So because they had to develop hair to stay warm, glacial adaptation they did not develop i guess this the melanin and whatever else to deflect from the sun and whatever else held the hair alone you see what i mean kind of blocks with the sun and the sun ain't heating them up anyways point being they had to develop that hair so the glacial adaptation of the hair they don't feel literally they don't feel the same way that we feel you see what i mean so being touched you know what i mean hair it, it, uh, even like the hair on your leg, you know what I mean? I'm trying to figure out a good way to put this shit. So, like the hair on your leg, right? You can feel something barely graze the hair on your leg. It'll make you jump. It'll make you jump, whatever else. So, if you got more thick and profuse, more found hair, more, more profound hair all over your body, like your chest and whatever else, you see what I'm saying? Another reason why the hair is all over the chest, because again, it's like a receptor. You know what I mean? The hair will know before the skin knows that something is within range. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's also another way, like anyways, I ain't gonna get into all of that. Like reflexes, you see what I'm saying? Other motherfuckers with quick reflexes, it's the hair. I ain't gonna get into all that. But the point being, this is why hair is so fucking important, not just this shit on your head, but all over your body. It's important, you don't really wanna cut it off. But anyways, point being, um, <laughs> even like I always say, man, her on the pussy or the dick, that shit's important. But anyways, 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 nigga. Um, the point being here, they got the hair and shit all over their body and whatnot. So touch and feel is different for them type of creatures or them people, right? So sex and whatever, even having sex, it doesn't feel the same. It's not the same for them. And by being so goddamn cold, cold and whatever else, you don't really want to take your clothes off and expose your private parts to the weather. You see what I'm saying? It's cold as shit. All men know, you know how they, I'm just saying, it's a thing, right? The shrinkage. When it's cold outside, your shit shrinks. Your balls go get closer to your body. You know what I'm saying? Closer to the heat. As does your dick, it pulls in a little bit. Closer to the heat. Closer to your body. You see what I'm saying? So... AKA, again, now, if you're evolving that way, with your meat and shit always drawn in and close to the body and trying to stay warm and this and that and whatever, you see what I mean? You don't really use the penis and whatever else. You only use it literally for that purpose, just to boom, 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 and whatever else and be done. You see what I'm saying? Then you're not going to evolve with a relatively large penis, are you? You're not going to evolve with a relatively... <laughs> high sperm count so to speak you know what i mean so but point being again that's part of the glacial adaptations and just me going on that little mild rant right there shows you how important these fucking books are and how they touch so many different topics not even just the ones that i have these books on so anyways i'm gonna keep going um <laughs> If we further accept the argument that Western man suffers more sexual reproductive aggression and frustration due to glacial adaptations, now that we know what that is, conflicting with sexual ones, then it becomes clear why love, their concept of it, their invention of love, the invention of love, is so important in the West. Love is the middle ground between aggression and the ability to reproduce. Love is that place where we can feel unthreatened in sex and the place where we can have sex without directing aggression towards our partner. 
the place where sex and respect can coexist for both ourselves and our partners. Given the greater degree of reproductive threat for Western man and given the greater degree of consequent frustration and aggression, that place called love can be very small and exclusive, but of utmost personal importance. So off the dribble, nigga, off the immediately. If I see somebody or hear somebody looking for love and talking about love in this manner, I know you are still in the fucking matrix. I know you still trapped, nigga. Period. If you're talking about love or looking for love or whatever the fuck in this manner, you got your goddamn mind. Now, now check this out. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because I don't feel like reading the whole goddamn thing. But. <clears throat> Uh, da, 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 da. So I can bring in key in this other book. Check this out. Okay, okay. The courtship antics of Western man differ little from the courtship process common to all pair bonding species. Conrad Lorenz. Conrad Lorenz has studied the courtship ceremonies of creatures as diverse as fish, geese, and has demonstrated through behavioral analysis that courtship ceremonies are ritualized fighting. So this is again why you can argue with some fucking body else about how you grew up and what the fuck happened in your life and your experience and what the fuck else. Who gives a fuck? Niggas have studied this shit and not just humans, other fucking animals. Nature fuck can you do argue with the scientist the nigga that won the fucking nobel prize argue with that nigga and you know what he's studying he's studying this shit how the fuck these birds and fish and whatnot apply to this shit because them motherfuckers are more like animals well just less evolved as far as humans being evolved on the planet go these motherfuckers all less evolved, but it's the mentality that comes with it. So anyways, again, that ties in Conrad Lorenz. The courting partners begin their relationship by aggressively sparring with each other, with fighting motions directed towards each other. But as courtship progresses, the aggressive movements are directed increasingly to the side of the partner. Until eventually, the courting pair find themselves side by side with their combined aggression directed outwards. The fascinating analysis of this process is fully covered in Conrad Lorenz on aggression. Which is why I bought this book. Somebody asked me, how do you find these books? Sometimes the niggas mention it. When they pull quotes out, go buy the book that they just quoted from. Because most of the time, they'll tell you a quote. Or how some of these books, they have like a little marker, a little one, or a little two. Then you go find that shit at the bottom of the page. Or you go find that shit in the bibliography or the notes section in the back of the book. And you go buy that book that they quoted from. And you go buy that shit. That's all I'm saying. That's how you find out. That's how you get to the doper shit. I did, like I said, two videos on this book alone. I ain't even got into detail. I'm just now like reading out of this shit. And we really need to talk about this shit. I just did a short video on this shit. But we need to go in depth about this shit as I'm reading now. So again, back to it, right, right? The fascinating analysis of this process is fully covered in Conrad Lorenz on aggression under the chapter entitled The Bond. The interesting problem in applying aggressive pair binding to human beings as a whole is that human beings are closely related to a group of animals, the great apes, which are not, strictly speaking, always pair bonded. Among the great apes, only the gibbon appears to be strictly pair bonded. Chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans also show some modest tendency toward polygamy. But, so you mean to tell me, even in the animals out in nature that are closest to humans, they don't be on that shit. Love ain't really a thing. But the humans have invented that shit. Anyways, anyways, social constructs, mind control, 
So, anyways, we get we get back to it. We get back to it. All right. Although man is morphologically related to the great apes, man's natural habitat and some aspects of his morphology would seemingly place him closer in psyche. <coughs> excuse me. To some of the ground living apes like baboons and man and drills mandrills, and these apes are not at all monogamous. Not at all. Now, he's saying man. I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out here. I don't think he's talking about all men. See what I'm saying? Not all of us. Not all of But I ain't going to get into all of that. But that's where I think the lines kind of get blurred a little bit. And this is where you got to keep your mind straight and this and that, so to speak. Because, again, I'm not saying that shit. But again, we talk about polygamy. And they talk about the men and whatever. I'm just saying. So in one instance, I do feel like this may be where he's talking about niggas and real humans. We're like this. But um, the Western man is on some other shit. So I just want to throw that out there. <clears throat> and these apes are not at all monogamous. Hmm. Only in the West has monogamy been consistently and at least nominally enshrined as the norm. Hmm. Why? Okay, we may wonder why this is. See, again, you want to know the fucking why, not the what. So, only in the West, industrialized, institutionalized societies, only in the West has monogamy been consistently and at least nominally enshrined as the norm. We may wonder why this is and whether it has something to do with love. If it be granted, if it be granted, for sake of argument, I know you say, ah, keep that shit to yourself for right now. If it be granted that Western man suffers from a higher level of sexual reproductive ambivalence, threat, frustration, and aggression, then it becomes obvious that these forces cannot be neutralized easily or with just anyone. The psychosexual, psychological, psychosexual truce that we call love, because it's a truth, which I'm going to get back to that. But the psychosexual truth that we call love will be a relatively rare occurrence between any two partners. Rare. The delicacy of the reproductive aggressive balance and the extreme difficulty in finding a partner who is psycho psychobiologically compatible and with whom one can negotiate a successful pair bonding has forced Westerners to institutionalize behaviors and attitudes which are not typical of the human norm. And that's back to why I just said, you know, they talk, it, it, that's where the lines kind of get blurred a little bit. The human norm, so we're talking about niggas. The human norm of this, but the Western man does that. The niggas ain't normal. But anyways, anyways, <clears throat> that's not a normal way of thinking. Psychosexual is not a normal way of thinking. Motherfuckers are mind controlled and it's like it just literally told you Institutionalized behavior and attitudes which are not typical of the human norm Sometimes there is no choice at all Because the complexity of the taboo structure may narrow the field of available partners down to just one permissible candidate Sometimes there's no choice at all See what I mean? No real choice for love that you really looking for because you got all of these, like the, uh, like I said, in when science, where science and magic meet, cognitive dissonance. You have all these psycho blocks where my family's this. I'm a Christian. I like that. I want this. A person's got to be able to do that. He got to provide. Got to have a job. At least got to have a car. I want to be able. You got all these fucking blocks in place. Got to be tall. Got to have muscles gotta be this da, da, da. there's all these fucking blocks and shit in place that stop you you know what i'm saying that that there's really truly only one fucking person out of the millions that's gonna fit into that slot and what chance do you have what if that nigga is in i'm i'm in kentucky what if that motherfucker's in idaho or Montana, some shit niggas never even think about going to average nigga like me anyway i'm not thinking about no goddamn wyoming what the fuck? 
You see what I mean? So it's like niggas, you make this shit so hard, and we've been institutionalized and industrial to make it so hard. And part of the reason why, matter of fact, let me keep going. Part of the reason why is because of this. It's so hard to actually find that person because in the West, it has always been recognized that the pair bond is a delicate and personal matter, and not only a social and family matter. It is understood and agreed that individuals have the right and obligation to rebel against social and familial convention to pair with a partner of their choice. To rebel. So it's got to be institutionalized. Like as we just way back up here has forced Westerners to institutionalize behavior and attitudes which are not typical of the human norm. Because if you fall in love, you'll stop doing all kind of shit. Uh, back to the science of love. If you fall in love, or if you're loving love, if you want to love like that, then some motherfuckers start using love in all the corrupt ways. Period. Trying to find love. Trying to figure out what their perfect love is going to be. And this or whatever the fuck. Nigga, you don't love yourself. It's mind can fucking control. You know what I mean? There's always some kind of discipline. Again, as I said earlier in this fucking video, man. Ancient China, none of that shit. Ancient Egypt, none of that shit. Love? You don't even know what the fuck it is. But let's get back to it, though. So, before we go too far, and that's the Iceman's inheritance. I ain't gonna take you too much longer into this video, but we do want to talk about this shit. The Bond. And I ain't gonna hit too much, but The Bond. But I do want to read so that you know it is no joke, you feel me? Okay, 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 okay. The bond. And dude really gets in it, man. Okay, all right. The behavior patterns. These behavior patterns. Okay, okay, all right, all right. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. We have seen the first trace of personal relationships in the territory owning males of, of certain mouth breeding fish or whatever. The gaffish mouth breeders, which form non aggressive packs with their neighbors and are only aggressive towards strange intruders. How only this is only a passive tolerance of the known neighbor. These behavior patterns of an objectively demonstrable mutual attachment constitute the personal tie which is the subject of this chapter. From now on I will call it the bond and the society which holds it together, the group. The group is thus characterized by the fact that, like the anonymous crowd, it is held together by the reactions elicited by one member in another. But in contrast to the impersonal social order of an anonymous crowd, the attachment reactions are inseparably linked to the individual's of group members. Gotta get up on my feet a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? Got my fucking buns hurting, nigga. Sitting down on this. I'm on a skateboard, by the way. Um, reason being, that's my magical shit. You can figure it out. If you know a little something about something, then you, you, you'll know why I'm on wheels, nigga. <laughs> but I'm sitting here on the skateboard and it's hard as fuck. So, anyways. I digress. My bad, my bad. Let me get back to it. My fault, y'all. But I'm drinking. I've been drinking. So, <clears throat> a prerequisite of group formation, it is a prerequisite of group formation that individual animals should be capable of reacting selectively to the individuality of every other member. <clears throat> but, true group formation is characterized by its independence of place. The part which every member plays in the life of every other one remains the same in an amazing number of different environmental situations. That is to say, personal recognition of the partner in all possible conditions of life is the essential for every group formation. Recognition of the partner must always be learned individually. Back to love. I ain't even... Let me just keep reading, man. <laughs> let me just keep reading. In a rather different sense, the phylogenetic prototype of the personal bond and of group formation... You know what? I got something to say about that. Really quick. 
phylogenetic prototype. In a rather different sense, the phylogenetic prototype. We're gonna do this. I'm, I'm gonna show you. This is you, you gotta. This is how they trip Nick most niggas up too. And this is why niggas don't read because of the fucking language that they use. But check this out. Whip out your phone. Check this out. Define phylogenesis. Here's the definition of phylogenesis. The evolutionary development and diversification of a species or group of organisms or of a particular feature of an organism. The evolutionary development and diversification of a species or group of organisms or a particular feature. That's what I wanted. A particular feature of an organism. A particular feature. That's all we needed. But so now that we know what phylogenetic prototype and we know a prototype is the original prototype. It's a fucking prototype. You should know what a goddamn prototype is, right? But so the phylogenetic prototype, the prototype of a behavior, the original behavior of an organism. So, in a rather different sense, the original behavior, instead of saying fucking phylogenetic, you can just say original behavior. The uh, original behavior of an organism, the prototype of the personal bond, and of the group formation is the attachment between two partners which together tend their young. We will now describe how this bond comes about. But anyways, I ain't, we, ain't, we ain't gotta do all that. We ain't gotta do all that. But it does, man, I don't wanna make this. This shit really needs its whole, needs its own thing. It, it And I'm probably gonna do that too. But the point here okay okay yeah I think the point was to mention habituation okay yeah so let's talk about habituation so basically 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 I think it's already talked about that before. I was trying to see if it if it mentioned it in a way that I could just read it and you would understand it as far as the situation. So I apologize for that little brief pause. But basically habituation what we're talking about is obviously habitat people being you know being familiar cuz you're in the same place or being close to you know what I mean habitual. Yeah, all right, whatever. <clears throat> Under natural conditions, habituation is largely responsible for preventing hostilities between the pr prospective mates. We can best imitate natural conditions by putting several young, still peaceable fishes in a large aquarium and letting them grow up together. Pair formation then takes place in the following way. On reaching sexual maturity, a certain fish, usually a male, takes possession of a territory and drives out all of the others. Now. Back to Iceman's inheritance. Sexual maturity, male stakes out his territory. That's time. A particular block of time. See what I mean? It's not just humans have become territorial over time. Some of us. The Western notion. More specifically. Oh, my bad. You know, Iceman's inheritance more specifically. But they become territorial over time. So that's where that comes from. But again, just to tie it all in, even though we in a whole nother book and now we're talking about fish. Remember, we tying it all in. Just to, you got to keep the, the shit in the background steady. You know what I mean? Even if like you taking notes, right? So anyways, this is why motherfuckers say take notes because we get further along whatever else and you can come back and figure the shit out. This is why I got multiple books. Anyways, my bad. I talk a lot. My fault. So, <laughs> see where we at? Okay. On reaching sexual maturity, a certain fish, usually a male, takes possession of a territory and drives out all others. Later, when a female is willing to pair, she approaches the territory owner cautiously and, if she acknowledges the superior rank of the male, responds to his attacks, which at first are quite seriously met with the so called coyness behavior. If, despite the clearly aggression inhibiting intention of these gestures, the male attacks, the female may leave his territory for a short time. So if he don't pick up, 
that she's only poking the bull just to get your attention again like kids that she's just hitting you because she likes you you know what i'm saying and you keep getting mad or whatever else she'll back off when she comes back you got to figure that out but anyways point being sooner or later she returns this is repeated over a varying period of until each of the two animals is so accustomed to the presence of the other that the aggression eliciting stimulus inevitably proceeds from the that inevitably yeah, I'm sorry inevitably proceeding from the female lose their effect so basically ooh this is a good one how that applies to fucking human terms right damn we've been 40 minutes into this Thank you. I appreciate the motherfuckers, the, the guys, the people, the men, women that stayed this long. Appreciate that shit. But, man, if despite the clearly aggression inhibiting intention of these gestures, the male attacks, the female may leave his territory for a short time, but sooner or later she returns. This is repeated over a varying period until each of the two animals is so accustomed. If clearly, clearly aggression, aggression inhibiting it provokes aggression the aggression inhibiting gestures of these intention of these gestures the male attacks meaning like my other video uh, she's supposed to be hard that's supposed to pull something out of you you know what I'm talking about but when that happens you see me you see me saying see what I'm saying <clears throat> she may leave for a while but she comes back now some guys get it in their head that they can attack and she's just gonna come back every time you know what I mean and and after they attack or whatever they can't get it they don't understand well, why didn't she return it's been this long or why ain't you got him back Nigga, not everybody acts like a fucking animal back to the mentality which is the ice man's inheritance you feel me same shit this is why you got to have the fucking books and this is why you know who's evolved, who's in the mind and who ain't so again I keep reading I keep reading right and this is repeated over a period of time until the two animals are so accustomed now two people of the like mind they peep that oh now you know oh that's what she's doing oh she's trying whatever now you understand the game the coyness behavior you understand the game that's being played you can do it too well you you know what I mean you can you can start to you know so that's the, the process of habituation but point is after it's happened so long this is repeated over a varying period of time until the two animals not all two people are the same but until the two animals are so accustomed to the presence of the other you've been around that person long enough that the aggression and eliciting they can say something I can call you a bitch but he can't I can call you a nigga but this white boy can't see what I mean that's where it comes from. It's how you know who's acting like a fucking animal, who's mind controlled, and who ain't. But, point being, shit that you accustomed to, the aggression eliciting stimulus inevitably proceeding from the female lose their effect. So, basically, the more she comes around and the more she huffs and puffs or whatever, you're supposed to eventually get over that shit. <sighs> Let her talk. Let her be mad. Oh, whatever. Sometimes when me and my baby mom just get into it and whatever, you she called me names and whatever. I just look. It has no effect anymore. That shit doesn't make me mad anymore. I'm over it. That's what. That's the whole thing. I'm over it. You're really supposed to be over it. If you was really over it, it wouldn't make you mad anymore. You see what I mean? When you get. But I'm not saying you even have to get used to it, but that's why it says accustomed. It doesn't mean you have to like it, but accustomed. You, you've seen it enough times to where you're accustomed to it. You know how this motherfucker's going to act. You know what they're going to do. You know they don't like you, so why the fuck you keep getting mad? You ain't figured it out. They don't like you. That's why they keep pushing buttons, because you keep getting mad. But this is what animals do. You see what I'm saying? So this is like, again, the self-check where you got to check. I'm doing some old animalistic shit. I'm not in my right mind. This is my reptile brain or my bird brain or whatever the fuck. Because the human brain has got a couple different brains. You feel me? So, <sighs> I digress. Back to the fucking book. But I just had to tie that in. But back to the book. <clears throat> if any of these factors... Okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Da, 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 da. Yeah, if any of these factors of, is missing, the whole effect of the habituation will be upset. This applies in particular to the beginning steps of peaceful, peaceful cohabitation, living together. 
You see what I'm saying? This is why you date before you move in with a motherfucker. That's on the human shit, but cohabitation. This is what animals, this is what happens out in nature, out in the real fucking world. Should a lot. Anyways, anyways, anyways. <laughs> when the partner must always appear in the accustomed route from the accustomed side, the lighting must always be the same, and so on. Otherwise, each fish considers the other as a fight releasing stranger. Transference to another aquarium can at this stage completely upset pair formation. The closer the acquaintanceship, the more the picture of the partner becomes independent of its background. Finally, the bond with the partner becomes so independent of accidental conditions that pairs can be transferred, even transported far away without rupture of their bond. Now back to the western shit and the human shit. Now there's so much aggression and frustration and shit tied up into the western philosophy and the western psychobiology, the western way of thinking and whatever else that yes nigga, you can go to work for eight hours and come home and treat your girl or she can go to work for whatever. Y'all can go to the store. You can leave every the separation when you leave X amount of time of you away from me or you away from that person, whatever the fuck, even friends. You see what I mean? Pair formation. Bond. This is the bond. It ain't necessarily love. This is just the bond. Cohabitation. This is why I started off talking about neighbors, even friends. Again, the science of love. It just says love. Now, I, I should have got back to the Iceman's Inheritance where he actually talks about how in the West, love is not just sexual, reproductive, and whatever else. Yes, that's a certain type of love, but the Greeks call that eros but then love is also expanded they expanded the shit to involve uh brotherly love and platonic love the love of god god loving you you see what i'm saying now that's a different type of love which in the book it says the greeks call that agape so you have eros which is fucking that type of love type of making love and then you have the other type of love which is agape but in the west it's all one goddamn thing meant to fucking confuse you but i'm not gonna get into etymology and all that type of shit love l-o-v-e e-v-o-l evil love evolution you get it evil evolution evolution whatever the fuck you want to get at it but you get my point here man damn am i getting bit or something i don't know weird shit going on out here i'm just feeling shit so excuse me <laughs> but anywho you get my fucking point here, man. It could even be friends. The longer you are away from somebody, that habitualization, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, but you know what I'm saying, the aggression eliciting stimulus, you see what I mean, that you was able to let go, it'll gradually build back up. And so just depending on the person or have it else, that's why you might ask you, have you had a bad day? But this is back to where other, again, own aggression. Out in nature, other animals, whatever else, it... it I would get to the redirected activity. You know what? You know what? Yeah, man. Like I said, I ain't trying to make this video too goddamn long. But I think I have shared enough to make that shit interesting. Like, share, comment, uh, all of that shit, man. Mainly just comment. I really don't give a fuck if you like the videos, if you share, you subscribe. I don't give a good damn. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I appreciate the shares. You know what I mean? But comment. You know what I mean? That's what keeps me going. A comment or something, you know what I mean? And then we'll keep talking. That's what made me even come back to the Iceman's Inheritance, nigga. Because we really, I needed to get back into that. But again, it just, it, it, it takes the shit. It takes you so many different places. And this shows you why multiple books are really fucking great to have. So you can understand this book. This, this book gives you a way deeper understanding of this book. It was part of the shit in this book. It made him want to write this book because he had to have read this book in order to quote it in this one. And this was this was 1970. I, don't know, I had to go back and see. I didn't even think to check and see when the fuck this one was written. But this one was written in 1970. So he had to have this shit prior to this. So anyways, again, man, but the closer the acquaintanceship, the more the picture of the partner becomes independent of its background. And that's even friends and whatnot. Now. As far as, again, on the sexual side, if pair formation runs an undisturbed course, the male's sexual behavior gradually comes to the fore. So, <clears throat> eventually, in the female, however, 
the original escape readiness and submissiveness decrease very quickly. So, if pair formation runs an undisturbed course, the male's sexual behavior gradually comes to the fore. In the female, however, the original escape readiness and submissiveness decrease very quickly. Again, man, like like I said, she's supposed to be hard. The black woman, the whatever the fuck you want to call it, modern woman, she's supposed to be hard. But the point is, if you got your shit together, you see what I'm saying? Well, then then she's not gonna submit to you. That like that shit goes away apparently very quickly. But escape readiness and submissiveness decrease very quickly very quickly but movements expressive of fear or escape mood disappear in the female more and more with the consolidation of pair formation so if you still trying to wave your gun around and scare a bitch or you still trying to huff and puff and da -da 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 -da, and she's not scared of you at all that's love so to speak <laughs> You see what I'm saying? You shouldn't even be trying to scare her anymore at this point. You see what I'm saying? But that, she ain't afraid of you, nigga. Good. It, okay, you big and bad, but you're not supposed, again, that's a, the book is deep as fuck, but that's supposed to be all, a, a bunch of, this is why the Iceman's Inheritance is such a very vital book to have because of that fucking factor. It is that mentality. That fucking mentality right there, which is what had me just fucking lose my shit just now. But that's the mentality, man. Uh, let me get back up on my tree, nigga. Huh. Okay, calm down. That's the mentality. I gotta wrap this up. I'm gonna have to wrap this up, like, real quick. Um, Y'all can't see what I can see. But I see I'm going to need to wrap this up real quick. <laughs> so let me finish this shit. Um, but you get the point here, man. Movements expressive of fear or escape disappear in the female more and more with the consolidation of paraformation. So you want, a, you want a woman to submit and the rest of that shit? Get the fuck out of here. It's not getting right happen. Especially the more... You deal with her. It might happen in the beginning, but the more you deal with her, the more she gets used to you and accustomed to you. It's not going to happen. So that's, that's dumb as fuck. But again, this is nature. It's just, huh. At first, nervously submissive, the female gradually loses her fear of the male and with it, every inhibition against showing aggressive behavior. Now again, as far as humans are concerned, you may not be the first male. You see what I mean? And I'm going to wrap that up with this and we can talk more about it if you want to. But, uh... Yeah, I can't even keep sitting down. This has been long enough, damn near an hour. But I'm going to wrap that up with this. You may not be the first male, the first relationship that she's been in. So, with that being said, if you act the same or you move the same as them old niggas or the same niggas, you know what I mean, that she's already dealt with or men that's already been in her life, then those aggression, eliciting, whatever the fuck, she's already learned how to get over that. Again, like I said, she's over it. That shit's done. You can't move the same way the last nigga moved and think you're going to get the same type of shit out of her. Nah. It's not going to happen. <clears throat> so again, at first nervously submissive when they first start dating, the female gradually loses her fear of the male and with it every inhibition against showing aggressive behavior. So that one day her initial shyness is gone and she stands fearless and truculent in the middle of the territory of her mate. Fearless and truculent. Yeah, nigga, I'm here. And that's when... <clears throat> As may be expected, the male gets furious for the stimulus situation presented by the female lacks nothing of the key stimuli, which, from ex experimental stimulus analysis, we know to be strongly fight-releasing. So he also assumes an attitude of display the male does not waste time and, and then this thing happens okay alright let me my bad I'm reading ahead because I want to say this shit so bad okay alright so 
as may be expected. Okay, at first nervously submissive, the female gradually loses her fear of the male and with it every inhibition against showing aggressive behavior so that one day her initial shyness is gone and she stands fearless and truculent in the middle of the territory. She'll be in the middle of your house in the middle of your fucking face. Fearless and truculent. Fuck you gonna do, bitch ass nigga. Or laughing. <laughs> what the fuck? That ain't shit. Wave your gun. Pop your shots off, nigga. You ain't gonna do it to me. And they know it. Because they know you love them. So anyways. <laughs> point being. And now you're gonna be submissive. But anyways, as may be expected, the male gets furious. So again, even women, you should know when you do that to a nigga, he's gonna get mad. The good ones won't pop you. But that's the, that, that's the good ones. But anyways, not all of them got their mind together. Anywho. <clears throat> we know, okay, as may be expected, the male gets furious for the stimulus situation presented by the female lacks nothing of the key stimuli, which we know to be strongly fight releasing. The male does not waste time replying to the threatening of the female. He is far too excited for that, but he actually launches a furious attack, which, however, is not directed at his mate, but passes by her narrowly, finding its goal in another member of the species. Under natural conditions, this is regularly the territorial neighbor. This is a classic example of the process which we call a redirected activity. Now... That deserves its own fucking video. And I'm probably going to stop this shit and start up that whole goddamn video. Do it in the in the house, rather. Because, yeah, I'm being called in the house. So let me go ahead and get in there. Um, it's been an hour. Man, I appreciate y'all rocking with your boy. Like my shit. <laughs> you ain't got to. I don't give a fuck if you do or if you don't. But why not? <laughs> Share the shit, man. Get me out there, man. Holler at me. Subscribe. If you done made it this far, fucking subscribe. You know what I mean? Fuck with your boy. But, uh, Sam, is there anything else I want to say? Uh, back to the Iceman's inheritance. Do I want to pull that out real quick? Nah, I'm going to leave it at that, man. We done said enough. We done said enough. But, again, the two things, the main thing, love and expression. Love is a fucking invention, mind control. And the second thing was get all the books. Get all the books. And when you take taking notes or when you understand what's going on, it's just intent. As you read in the book, when you start to try to figure some shit out or you get an idea, don't be afraid to jump into another book and start reading about it. I know I, I, as I was reading the Conrad Lorenz, it got way, it, it got more into the animals and this and that than about the Iceman's inheritance shit that I was reading at first and whatever else. So I apologize about that. But even at the same rate, man, again, that's the whole point. You know, some people might be more into the animals or whatever else, but you get a more in-depth understanding and you can then correlate the shit, take it from human terms, take it from animal terms in the human terms. Oh, well, this is that and that's how this is like I just did. You start connecting dots and then they get to running off at the mouth. So that's what you want to do. You want to be able to connect dots and shit. That's what I'm here for. To help connect dots and shit. You know what I mean? That's how you become a polymath. A man or a person that knows a lot of shit about a lot of shit. You know a lot of facts or a lot of... <laughs> you know what I mean? About a lot of topics. You've studied a lot of many different many different things. You know what I'm saying? A jack of all trades, master of none. But anywho, and I didn't even have to touch this shit. Again, it's another video. So, holla at your boy.